What's up, everybody? This is Carl from Techbo Goodies, and on my desk here, I have the Algo Laser DIY Kit 5 Watt Laser Engraver, okay? So this barely fits on my desk, but I'll do my best to kind of show some B-roll, some extra video to, so that you can actually see what the device is and how it works. So as I mentioned, this is a laser engraver, okay? So this is my first foray into laser engraving. And what I've found is there is a bit of a learning curve, right? There's different materials, there's different lasers, there's different things you can do based on what laser you have and what material you have. This one here specifically is a five watt laser. Now lasers can go up to a much higher wattage and those are usually for cutting, um, less for engraving. This particular model comes in a two watt, a five watt, and a 10 watt. And like I said, I have the five watt here. So the five watt is actually capable of engraving a lot of different things. And I have some examples here, kind of show you the progression I went through in order to learn how to use it. The setup and assembly to this was pretty straightforward, but also was a little bit difficult for me and my son because we managed to put it together wrong three different times. So we kind of had to take pieces apart, put them back together because the way these outer bars are set up, they have to be in a very specific orientation so that the power pack will fit on as well as the laser unit and the glide itself. So this middle part here glides along in order to sort of move the laser and then the laser moves back and forth if you have any sort of 3D printer that you've used. It's a very similar concept, but the software controls everything about this. And the software that I'm using is called Laser Gerbil. It's Laser G-R-B-L, and that's a free software that allows you to be able to load in images, and it will convert it to the instructions that are necessary for this laser machine to work. So if you end up buying this particular unit, it will come with one piece of wood, right? So this piece of wood right here is what I ended up getting. Um, and we'll go into a little bit of what I was able to do with that and what I was able to test with that. But uh, so I also went ahead and bought a piece of anodized aluminum so that I could go ahead and try to print on that. I bought some patches that go onto hats, uh, leather patches. I bought a phone case um, and just tried a couple different things. So this isn't going to be much of a tutorial on how to use the device because that would just be an hour long. And Algo Laser already has a bunch of really good tutorials that you can follow if you decide to purchase this machine. And I'll leave the link down below so you can check it out if you're ever considering getting into laser engraving. So the first thing that I ended up doing was printing this, okay? So this is the wood that I ended up getting with the device itself, okay? Now, one of the things that I found was that I was so new to this that I didn't particularly know what I was doing. I just left it at the base settings. And what that did was that it tended to maybe burn or overburn in some areas. So what is common practice is for you to be able to go ahead and print out a laser and power test grid so that you'll know exactly what power setting and speed setting to use for the material that you're doing. So I went ahead and printed that on the back here, okay? So what you can see, and I'll hold this up close, is that there's a whole range, and, and one of the good things about this particular laser printer is that it will do uh, really nice gradients, okay? So if you have like an actual photo that you wanna print on something, it'll do that quite well. And you can kind of see that here with all the different powers because what you do is when you set it up, you set, okay, I want the minimum power to be zero and the maximum power to be a thousand. So that will allow the laser to go up to a thousand for the darkest of darks and then also to zero or 10% just for those fine gradients. So if you look here on the left side, you have some numbers. Those are your F numbers. So F1000 all the way to F4000. And F uh, is the number that you put, I believe, into the speed or how fast the laser will move. And then across the bottom here, you have the power. So those are your S numbers. And so this is a power versus speed grid. So if I would have looked at this, I would have known that maybe I wanna go ahead and do this one right here. And it's so small, I wanna see. So that's S100 and F1000. I think I had it at S1000, which is all the way up here, and F1000. So when I did this print, you can see that there definitely is some overprinting. Now, the thing I noticed about laser engraving is that it does give kind of a texture. It's not just drawing on top of this, it's actually burning away the wood. So this turned out pretty nice and I was pretty happy with this. So then what I did was I went ahead and graduated to some other things. I decided I was gonna go ahead and buy a phone case for my phone. I'll show you a quick image of that. And what I did was print my logo on there. Again, this was before I knew about the speed test. It turned out really well, 
but I would have liked to adjust exactly how deep or how strong that ended up being, as well as, you know, work with the size. One of the things that I find difficult, and you can remedy this, but what I find difficult is lining up the substrate that you're printing on so that you don't have an angled image, right? You can line it up with the sides here, but if it's a smaller item, like some patches that I was doing, you'll see that it is a little bit difficult to get that lined up correctly. You can buy additional underplates for protection in case the laser goes through, which I had it do. I had it too strong on one of the patches and it actually just burned straight through into the table below. If you're gonna use something like this, make sure you use it in a well-ventilated area. I have it downstairs in on my first floor right next to a window with a fan and blows everything out the window. So the fumes can be toxic depending on what you're doing. I also tried it on another case that I had. I'll show you it here. So I tried to do it on this one and you can see that it did work, but what it ended up doing was just melting the plastic away. And then, so there was some splash over from the plastic. And because this is a plastic item all the way through, you're not gonna get any sort of dark black. You'll just see the embossed look on the surface itself. So then, like I said, I went ahead and bought some patches. Here's an example of that. So this is kind of a, a patch and you can see that there is a bit of overburn and it is angled because I, I just didn't do it correctly. Um, if I would have done a test on this, like I did here. So let me show you another example of what I did with patches. Um, you can see that I went ahead and bought these black patches. Now, the way these work is that right below the surface, there is a silver layer. So if you burn away the top layer, you end up seeing the silver show through. If you look at the power test that I did here, you can see that over here in this area, you're just not getting any sort of visual on the product itself because it's burning past that silver layer and down. So what I found was that if I did this one right here, which was like S100 and uh, F1000, that it would work perfect, okay? So then doing this test really helped with that. So here's the result of what I ended up doing. So first I kind of did the logo on there and you can see it's a little askew from what I wanted it to be. And the laser is really capable of doing a lot of intricate detail, but on the substrate that I have here or the product that I have here, you can see that some of those details are too fine and they end up getting lost. So my final test was this one right here. So this is kind of like a Techful Goodies logo that I put on here and I used the correct settings and it came out beautifully. So I'm super happy with what I've come up with over time. The one thing that we did try to do was go ahead and engrave onto metal. Now, if you're trying to do stainless steel or anything like that, it's actually just not going to work because in, in my mind, I think to myself, okay, it's gonna burn a nice dark black thing onto a piece of metal, but it doesn't. It just kind of, it's just, the, the metal's too strong for that. And what we found out is that you can actually buy a product that is like a spray paint or a white paint that you put onto the metal and that will go ahead and burn onto the metal and become sort of, a decal on the metal itself. And while that works pretty good, I found that you can kind of wipe it off. So depending on what the quality of that substance is that you put on there, you can emboss metal, uh, but it might not have a good amount of longevity depending on what surface it's on and what paint you use. So the last thing I kind of wanted to show you, which I really, really like, was that I picked up this piece of black metal. The way that it works is that it's an anodized aluminum. It has a black paint over the aluminum underneath. So if I flip it over, you'll see that I was able to go ahead and etch directly off. So what it does is it gets rid of the black paint and leaves behind whatever logo or whatever design you put on there. If you look closely, you can see that some of the areas, you know, aren't as clean as they should be. And that's just simply because I also did not do a speed test. This was before I got into the speed tests and the power tests. So fortunately it ended up working, but I think that if I would have done a test on the back just to see exactly what the right settings were, I probably would have got a better result, but I can't complain about this. I absolutely love it. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back over here. And that looks pretty nice. Of course, I've got a little bit of the blur on my camera, but it looks pretty nice back there. But overall, I've always wanted to get into laser engraving, but I didn't know what to do, right? So really the only thing you can do is if you really want to do this is just to pick one up. But with a DIY kit like this, if you purchase it, you were able to go ahead and upgrade it. So the way they have this work is that it is a DIY kit. So you put it all together, then you can add things to it. You can add a blower to it. You can add the bottom plate to it. You can upgrade the laser. You can do all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of like that first step into laser engraving. And again, you know, I think that 
in general, a lot of my experiments ended up like absolute crap because I didn't know what I was doing, but a lot of them ended up really nicely and I'm looking forward to just continuing to use this. Thanks to them for sending this over so that I could try it out, share it with you, give my experience, give my thoughts. But overall with the unit, the ease of using it, I'm super impressed. I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped you out. If so, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. Subscribe, I'd love to see you back. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies and I'm out.